Morning everyone. For many months I have felt that God's heart for us is that when we get back together we will have moved on, that we will have progressed forward, that we won't have stagnated or stopped, that we won't come back together bedraggled or battle weary, beaten down, but that we'll have a deepened faith, that we will have a light in our eyes and a spring in our step and we'll celebrate because we can be back together again. But in recent weeks, I've had the phrase growth in adversity on my heart. And I've been looking at that and exploring that. Growth is the process of increasing in size or capacity, extending, widening, thickening, broadening, heightening, maturing, developing, germination, shooting or springing up, sprouting, blooming, flourishing, thriving. If I'm honest, these are not words that I immediately think of in our current situation. There's life and new growth because it's spring, but the situation and circumstance that we've been in for many months now is continuing. Adversity as a base as a root word means turned against, hostile or unfavourable, difficult or unpleasant situation, misfortune, hardship, distress, suffering, sorrow, misery, heartbreak, heartache, wretchedness, woe, pain, loss, upset, setback, burden, hassle, stress. And if I'm honest, those are more the words that I would link to where we are than to what we're going through at present. So there's this call to grow and this call to growth and there's this situation and circumstance that is adverse. And how do we grow in a situation like that? James 1 verse 2 to 3 echoes that idea. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. It's the sense of joy when you're facing the trials. It's the being victorious, living victoriously in the difficult situation. On the 1st of February, I was looking down our garden and I noticed that some of the autumn leaves that were dead and dried, that we'd missed, had blown across the garden and had settled on the lawn and in the flower beds. Um, I was brought up that you put your garden to bed at the end of November and then you leave it alone and you wake it up in February. And this was the 1st of February. It was a bitterly cold but dry day. And I was really excited. I thought, oh, I can go out and deal with those leaves. So put on the warm clothes, got the rake, got the gloves and went out. And very soon noticed that what I had seen from my position in the house wasn't actually the full story. That underneath these piles of leaves were bulbs. And I could see these bulbs because they were shooting. They were, in some cases, just breaking the surface of the soil. In other cases, they'd grown to quite a height and even started to form buds on the 1st of February. And it was cold. And I'm looking at these uh, growths and this new growth. And I just thought, that's what it is. We don't grow in adversity. We grow through adversity. The fact that there were leaves on top of the soil didn't stop these bulbs from sprouting and from growing and to pushing through what looks like death and decay. And you might think, well, that's such an insignificant thing, changing a word, changing it from growing in adversity to growing through adversity. But it completely changes your perspective, completely alters the way that you can view things. In expresses the situation as something that is or appears to be enclosed or surrounded by something else. It's a sense of enclosed and constrained, smallness, the sense that you've stopped, that you are focusing on what you are in 
that the circumstance and the situation becomes your field of vision. It takes up your view. Through, on the other hand, means from the beginning to the end of a period of time. It indicates movement into at one side or point and then out at another. There's an implication that there's traveling, that there's motion, that there's movement, that there's focus on a destination, that the thing that you're currently experiencing is transient. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18, as Roger reminded us last week, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Roger reminded us that we give thanks in the circumstances. We don't give thanks for the circumstances. And when I was reading this verse, I was really encouraged by the word all, in all circumstances. Some translations say in every circumstance. And that implies that there's more than one. But whatever circumstance or situation we are currently in, it will change. We will move out of it. We will move into something else. It's transient. It's not permanent. And we need to be able to view it as that. But when I've been thinking and pondering about what to share this morning, I believe God laid three groups of people, three images, three senses of feeling on my heart. The first is that some of us um, just have a sense of weariness, of heaviness, of a weight. We're continuing on with our life, we are continuing on with God, but there's a burden that we are carrying. And I believe this morning that God wants to come and lift your head. The second is a feeling of numbness or detachment, that nothing feels quite real anymore that you're continuing on, but you don't feel connected to anything. You feel removed. And I believe this morning that God wants to encourage you to draw near afresh, and that as you do that, he will draw near afresh to you. And the third group of people, there are some of us who have gradually over weeks and months have closed ourselves off. We have hunkered down, we have withdrawn we've become in the situation. We are holding on to our faith, we are trusting God, but we are still, we're not moving. It's almost the idea that when everything's okay, when everything's resolved, when we're back together, when life is normal, we will move on again. And I believe this morning that God wants to gently break you out of that and to get you moving again. All of those sets of feelings, all of those ideas are completely natural human reactions to everything that's going on either around us or in the lives of people we know and love, maybe in our own lives. And it's not that we've given up on God. We haven't stopped loving him and trusting him, believing his promises, standing on his word. But there's just a sense that for some folk, we are living in adversity. We're not growing through adversity. In our house at the moment, we have a number of bulbs. They're not indoor bulbs. They're not ones that should be planted in a pot in the house. They are outdoor bulbs of all different sizes and shapes. And for one reason or another, they are currently in the house and they need planting out. Some of them are even trying to grow, even though they're not in anything. And this will die none of these will do what they're supposed to do. Unless they get planted outside, they will never grow, they will never flourish, they will never flower, they will never do all those words that describe growth, sprouting and thickening and heightening and widening, all the things that sort of make you feel alive and good. If you plant things outside, it's obviously not as safe. Those bulbs at the moment are in a safe place. It's warm, they're protected, they're undisturbed, but they're going to die. They need planting out and they're going to be planted out into a garden. They are going to experience a wide range of climates as they are in the soil during the year. It's going to be noisy. 
I don't know if you can hear the noise around me at the moment, but it's noisy. There are predators, mice, squirrels, that type of thing. There's a possibility of damage and a possibility of being disturbed. But just as that is where those plants should be, those bowls should be planted, it's the same for us. We are not of this world, but we are in this world. And our life is not designed to be comfortable and safe. We are called to live in the world, to go through the good and the bad, to suffer the adversities and the joys and the, the good times. But we're called to grow through the adversity. And the reason that I'm sitting outside on what is actually quite a chilly day, possibly about to start raining, is that I wanted to emphasise that that's where we're called to be. That when you stop and reflect on all that we have in God and all that God has given us and the privilege of walking with him and knowing him in the situation and circumstances that we currently face, and when you stop and think that there are millions of people and there are people we come across every day, whether they are family, friends, work colleagues, neighbours, who don't have that, they don't have somewhere to go, they don't have someone to turn to who has all the answers. It makes us realise afresh how privileged we are and that we need to be out, we need to be amongst people in whatever form that can be at the moment. We need to be there to show how you can grow through adversity, that you don't have to live in adversity. The most important thing I felt for this morning really was to give us chance and opportunity and some space to come before God as we are, to take some time and to acknowledge to ourselves and before him how we feel, how we're coping, where we are at with everything that's going on around us. But we open up our hearts that we are real and true and honest. It took me coming outside of the house, into the garden, in the cold, to physically do something and take some action, to rake up leaves, to identify growth, and to actually deal with the things that were going on that might prevent that growth. And I believe that God wants us to be outside. He wants us to have a new perspective, to see the growth that he is bringing, even now as the seasons change naturally, that in our walk with him and in the way that things develop during the rest of this year, that there will be growth and there will be so much to celebrate. But to give us a chance just to come and draw near and see him and allow him to refresh us and revive us. There's a song that we are going to listen to, hopefully join in with, and it starts, Be still, there is a healer. His love is deeper than the sea. His mercy is unfailing. His arms are fortress for the weak. Be still. It's an encouragement to draw near. And as I said before, I believe there are people that as you draw near, that disconnection, that lack of attachment to what's going on around you will clear. The song goes on, let faith arise. I lift my hands to believe again that you are my refuge, you are my strength. As I pour out my heart, these things I remember. You are faithful God forever. And as we confess that, as we lift our hands, as we declare again that he's our refuge and our strength, as we pour out our heart, as we remember who he is, he will lift the weariness, lift the heaviness, take away the burden, lift our heads, move us on, change our perspective so that we see clear. Just to allow God to minister to us, that as we walk into the next days, the next weeks, the next months, whether that's in adverse circumstances, improving circumstances, joyful circumstances, that we will grow through whatever circumstance we are in.
close this morning, I just wanted to pray. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. And Father, I just thank you that that's true today. Father, that no matter what circumstances we find ourselves in, that you have given us everything, everything that we need to succeed. And Father, that the key as always is remembering that everything comes from you. Drawing close to you, spending time with you, allowing our perspective and our sight and our view of everything that we go through to be seen from your position. And Father, I just ask as we go on with our day, that Father, that we will know you close. And Father, I thank you in the days ahead that there will be testimonies of how people have seen such growth in all sorts of different ways as we've walked on with you through adversity, growing with you. Thank you, God. Amen.